Hi friends, today we are going to see a new topic in which we are going to understand how to implement a multi-rate uh, system which is having a very higher value of either upsampling or downsamplers. For example, if suppose I wanted to upsample or downsample by a factor of 16, okay, then the filter coefficients that I need to calculate is huge. The filter design is huge. Even if I use polyphase filtering, then it will be Z raised to 16 uh, kind of uh, a structure, which is really complicated. To avoid uh, or to actually divide the job and get the things done by, incre by without increasing the complexity of the design is by using multi-stage implementation. What we are basically doing is, let's say I have my decimation factor, uh, my decimation factor, we don't use M, but some books do use M, we use D. So D equals to, let's say, uh, 2 Let's say D equals to 16. So we have a decimation of D equals to 16. Then I can I can factorize 16 as let's say D total D. I can I can make it as 4 into 2 into 2, or I can write as uh, 8 into 2, or I can make it. 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 and so on and so forth okay so here the number of stages that I am dividing 60 is uh, 16 is 3 here it is 2 and here it is 4 right so we can reduce huge amount of complexity if I will go with the force the stage but then the time delay introduced by each system will also increase. So we need to get an optimum uh, kind of a solution when we are dividing the given factor or uh, defactorizing a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize a given uh, digit or let's say a down sampler or an up sampler factor uh, into smaller sub factors and then I'm going to uh, casket them. How will my structure look like? Let's say for the first one, I need to have a down sampler of value 4, but I cannot down sample a signal directly. So what I will do is I will put a, I will put a filter before it and then I will down sampler sample by a factor of four then i will put second filter which is h1z and then i will put the second down sampler and finally the third one h2z is further down sampled by two and now you get the final output right so here if suppose I say fx, right, so here it will be fx only, no change, just limited, here it will be fx by what, fx by 4, then here also it will be fx by 4, no change in the sampling rate, here it is getting again further increased. So fx by 4 into 2, which is 8. Then here it will be again fx by 8. Finally, we have fx by 8 to the 16. Okay. So this becomes my stage 1. This is my stage 2. And this is my stage 3. Great!
So we have stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. So what I did, I divided the given uh, de decimation factor into 3 subsections or subfactors, which is 4, 2, 2. And I achieved, at the final output, I will achieve fx by 16. That is a required sampling rate decrease. So what should be the uh, design procedure for this or, or how we should design? So let us first draw an in general, in general block diagram. So in general, if I have a decimation factor D, then I can divide them into products of, okay, let's say I equals to 1 to capital J, DI, right? Uh, over here, uh, the in the first case, the J term is, uh, in the first case, the J term is 3, in the second case, it's 2, and in the third case, it is 4. So, I can divide it into 1 to J, into uh, and it is being product, that's why I've used this pi symbol of DIs, okay? Then, my in general's block diagram will look like, I will get input as x of n that will have the first filter let's say h1 of n given to the first decimator at stage 1 this will be d1 because the value of i will be equal to 1 okay then next will be h2 of n and the decimator will give me d2 and so on and so forth it will reach up to let's say h j of n and here the decimation factor will be d j and then the output here i'll get y of m let's say okay fine so here I can say I'm going to get my sampling by D1. Here I'm going to say I'm going to get a sample by D1, D2 multiplication. And here finally I will get Fx upon D, where D is nothing but D1 into D2 into D3, so on till Dj, which is also written as i is equal to 1 to j di okay so this is how my in general decimation will look like now on what factor does the sampling rate of the ith let's say any arbitrary uh, stage depends on i take any one in between okay let's say at ith stage at ith stage Okay, what I'm going to achieve at ith stage, my decimated fre fre frequency will be equal to f of i minus 1 divided by d of i. And i takes the value as 1, 2, 3, so on till j. What does it mean? If suppose I'm standing at, at stage number 2, how what on what basis stage number two depends on let's say this i write to be as f1 okay so f1 is complete fx by d1 what will be output at d2 the output at d2 will be f2 let's say at stage 2 which depends on f1 upon d2 correct so here the value of i is equal to 2 that's why I'm going to get D2 and F2. And here it is 1. 1 means it is less than 2. How much less? 1 less than 2. So the next sampling rate depends on the previous stage sampling rate. That's why in general, we have written it as Fi is equal to Fi minus 1 upon Di. Right? And where I depends on 1 to J. Now, in the initial stage, that is at the first stage, where I'm going to get xn, I represent that the xn, let's say, signal is sampled at a rate of fx, which is the 0th, let's say, 
zero at frequency. So f not is equal to f x uh, is equal to f x. This is at the zero at stage. That is at the input stage. Okay. Then to avoid the process of aliasing, okay, what I should have a total decimation process should be uh, uh, like if I'm dividing it by sixteen, then my filter should uh, reduce the 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 band of the input signal in such a way that when it is going to get spread, it it will spread up to pi. It will not go beyond. This will avoid my uh, aliasing. So the overall uh, to manage the overall uh, aliasing, okay, what we will do is we will uh, control aliasing at each stage because if I am controlled uh, aliasing at stage one, this signal is going going to get processed by signal uh, stage two. Stage two also I'll put a filter such a way that it will also take care that there will be no aliasing. And if each each stage take care of there is no aliasing. Then when I'm going to generate the output, the final stage will not have any sort of aliasing. Okay, so to avoid aliasing, I need to design each filter very carefully. So what are the uh, design equations for each stage that I that we will write? Okay, so for filter at each stage. Okay, I will have my pass band to be equal to going from zero to F to F P C. Okay, and my transition band to be between F P C less than equal to F less than equal to F S C. Okay, and FSC is equal to FX less than equal to FX by two into D. Okay, so my transition, my pass band should be zero to FPC. Transition should be FPC to FSC, and FSC should not exceed FX by two D. If this happens, if this if if FSC does not exceed f x by two d, then what is going to happen? There will not be any aliasing. Otherwise, there will be aliasing. Okay. Now, next we have. Okay. At each stage, this will take care now. Okay. So for each stage, okay, to avoid aliasing, what I will have is my at each stage. I will have pass band to be zero less than equal to F less than equal to F P C. Okay, then my transition band to be between F P C less than equal to F less than equal to F I minus F S C. Okay, F I is the previous uh, is the current state in which we are, and stop band should be from F I minus F S C less than equal to F less than equal to F I minus F S C. Oh. It will not be F I. This these two limits are the same, so it will it will not go up to that point, but it should be I minus one upon two, where I minus one is in the index. Okay, so it will go from F I minus F S C to F I minus F I minus one upon two. Why this is so? Because I need to take care that my stop band should be less than or equal to F X by two D. To maintain this situation, I will use this condition. Okay. So, what will be at stage one? Let's see. At the first stage itself. Okay. So at stage one. Okay. 
What is the value of i over here? i is equal to 1. So what will be i minus 1? i minus 1 will be 0. Okay. What will be pass band in that case? Pass band will be 0 less than equal to f less than equal to fpc. Whatever given in the problem. Transition band will be nothing but but it will be fpc given less than equal to f less than equal to f of 0 minus fsc. Correct? And what is f of 0? Uh, sorry, f i, i, i. So, it is f i. So, if I, it is i, i is 1. So, f i is f 1 minus f s c and stop band will be f 1 minus f s c less than equal to f less than equal to f 1 minus f 0 by 2. Okay. And what is f 0? f 0 is equal to f x. Right. So, this is at stage 1. In this way, if I am dividing into 3 stages, my i is going to take value from 1, 2, 3. If I am going to divide into 4 stages, then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the same step will repeat 4 times. Okay. So, this uh, you have to take care while designing a uh, decimator section uh, using multi-stage implementation. This will, uh, this will actually uh, reduce the burden of the system or system complexity will really be reduced. How it will reduce? That we will check using uh, a problem. That we will actually experience using a problem. But just for now, just to understand how it will reduce is to because the tr the, the filter is been now been uh, designed at lower uh, impulse or lower value of frequency. Uh, what is going to happen is uh, I can actually have. Uh, uh, let's say uh, I can actually um, trade off okay between the required components uh, in a given filter okay to give the same response also because I'm working with uh, lower and lower uh, uh, number of components the order of the filter required will also be less so if I'm implementing a one stage higher uh, value of decimator then the required filter order will be very high Whereas, if I am working with a, a multi-stage, then each filter will be, ultimately the cascade will give you that value, but each filter will have a lower uh, order and that really uh, improves the, uh, the computation complexity in the, of the filter. Okay. So, I hope that uh, this much explanation uh, is uh, enough uh, to understand how, why we actually require a multi-stage uh, implementation of a sampling rate converter. The very important piece of information that you need to always keep in mind while understanding or learning this uh, multi-stage is the set of formulas that I have written over here. These are the set of formulas that you should never forget because there will be huge amount of uh, design problems that will be arising uh, on this set of formulas. Okay. I hope uh, you have understood uh, what you mean by multi-stage implementation of sampling rate converters. Thank you.